Hello and welcome to this short film as part of your Steeped programme. In this section, we'll talk about eating and drinking and how your nutrition can help prevent a fall. We'll also discuss other factors like osteoporosis and how losing muscle mass can also be a risk. Nutrition is linked to many of the risk factors for falls. Your nutritional status can determine the severity of an injury sustained during a fall and also how long it takes you to recover. Some of the nutritional factors which increase your risk of falling include malnutrition, vitamin D deficiency, dehydration and sarcopenia, which we discuss later. Malnutrition and healthy eating. To reduce these risks, we must eat healthily, keep hydrated, be mindful of maintaining a healthy body weight and muscle mass, and ensure we are consuming enough calories and protein, as well as vitamins and minerals. Having inadequate amounts of all these nutrients can lead to malnutrition. This is a danger as it increases your falls risk due to protein loss, reduced muscle mass and a loss of strength and function. If you are concerned that you are malnourished or at risk of becoming malnourished, then you can speak to your GP, who in turn can refer you to a dietitian. Before we carry on, take a moment to think about how you feel if you've not eaten enough food or drunk enough fluids. How could this contribute to a fall? Eating a well-balanced diet with enough energy and protein is essential in promoting safe mobility and greater strength, balance and cognition. Together with a stable healthy body weight, these factors can greatly reduce the risk of a fall. The Eat Well Guide, produced by Public Health England, is a good place to start when looking at what foods we should be eating for a balanced, nutritional intake. It shows us the five different food groups and what proportion of our diet as a whole each should make up. The green section represents fruits and vegetables and should make up just over a third of your diet. You should be aiming to have at least five portions a day. These can be frozen, dried, canned or as a juice. Another third is the yellow section, containing starchy carbohydrates. You should aim to base your meals around potatoes, bread, rice, pasta, breakfast cereals and other starchy carbohydrates. Choosing whole grain or higher fibre versions are better for you and will help to prevent constipation. The last three sections of the guide are protein foods, dairy and alternatives and finally oils and spreads. Protein foods include beans, pulses, fish, meat and eggs. We will talk more about these later, but aim to eat two portions of fish a week one of which should be an oily fish such as salmon or sardines. Dairy and dairy alternatives include milk, cheese, yogurts, and alternatives such as soya and nut milks and products. We do need a small amount of fat in our diet in the form of oils and spreads. You should aim to choose lower saturated fat items such as rapeseed oil, vegetable oil, olive oil, and spreads made from these. Lastly, items higher in fat and sugar like biscuits, crisps, sweets, chocolate, ice cream and cakes don't necessarily need to be cut out, but should be eaten in small amounts and less often. Just like eating the right type and amount of food, we also must drink the right amount of fluids to keep our body healthy and hydrated. As we get older, we are more at risk of dehydration and this can contribute to some of the risk factors of increased falls. The effect on your body could be dizziness or lightheadedness, tiredness, headaches, dry mouth, lips and eyes, and it can lead to effects on your blood pressure, confusion or disorientation. To prevent dehydration, we recommend 8 to 10 200 milliliter cups of fluids a day and more in hot weather. This is not restricted to just water. It also includes tea, coffee, squash and fruit juices. A good indicator of how well hydrated you are is the colour of your urine. Aim for a pale yellow straw colour. If you are passing urine infrequently and it's a small dark amount, then you need to be drinking more fluids. Be careful with fizzy drinks though. Large quantities can make your bones weaker. 
Osteoporosis is a health condition that makes your bones weaker, making them more fragile and likely to break after a bump or fall. It's a painless condition unless you fracture a bone, and it develops slowly over many years. In the UK, over 3 million people are affected. You can look after your bones by daily weight-bearing exercises as recommended by your GP, such as walking, running, or simply shifting your weight from one leg to another. Ensuring you are consuming enough calcium and vitamin D. Eating a healthy and balanced diet and getting your five a day of fruit and vegetables. Eating foods that contain more protein, for instance meat, fish, beans, eggs and dairy foods and vegetarian alternatives such as tofu and pulses. Some lifestyle factors can increase your risk of osteoporosis, including smoking, having low oestrogen, being underweight, drinking more alcohol than the recommended weekly guidelines, or having certain other health conditions. Some of these things we have control over, and so making some lifestyle changes, if they apply to you, could reduce your risk of developing osteoporosis. Calcium and vitamin D play a big role in keeping our bones and muscles healthy and strong. Calcium makes up part of the structure of your bones and we need to consume a minimum of 1,000 milligrams a day to help maintain them. Think about how your food and drink can help boost your calcium intake. Dairy products such as milk, yogurts, cheese or custard. If you choose to have dairy alternatives, please ensure you are buying the ones with added calcium. Fish with edible bones, like sardines and pilchards, are also a great source, as is calcium-enriched produce such as tofu and soya beans. Calcium is also in nuts, bread, breakfast cereals and items made with fortified flour and green leafy vegetables, like broccoli and cabbage. If you struggle to eat enough calcium-enriched products, your doctor may prescribe you a calcium supplement, particularly if you're at increased risk of a fracture. Vitamin D works together with calcium and phosphorus to keep your bones and muscles healthy. Most of our vitamin D should be made from exposure to the sunlight, but there are some dietary sources as well. Good sources of vitamin D are oily fish, cod liver oil, egg yolk, milk, offal, and fortified products like yogurts, margarines, and some breakfast cereals. We recommend that everyone takes a daily vitamin D supplement all year round, particularly if you have little exposure to sunlight. We recommend one which contains 10 micrograms of vitamin D and can be purchased over the counter from your chemist, pharmacy, or supermarket. You may already be taking one which has been prescribed by your doctor. As you get older, part of the ageing process results in a gradual loss of muscle mass and strength. We call this sarcopenia. This occurs even if you are maintaining your weight. If you don't stay active, or are unable to, you will lose muscle even faster. This could be due to being bedbound or having a period of hospitalisation. Muscle loss will mean two things, a decrease in your activity levels and less strength making a fall more likely. It can contribute to decreased mobility, osteoporosis, loss in physical function and loss of independence. To help maintain your muscle mass, both nutrition and physical activity are needed together to help keep your strength. Age-related declines in muscle mass, strength and function can be reversed with adequate protein intake. If you are over the age of 65, your protein requirements are actually higher than that of younger adults. Your individual requirements may differ due to some medical conditions, so if you need guidance with how much protein you require, please speak to your GP, who can then offer advice or a referral. Consuming protein after activity enhances its beneficial effects, so aim to consume around 20 grams after activity. Protein-rich foods can help you build and keep muscle mass when combined with keeping active. Aim to spread out protein throughout the day, taking 20 to 30 grams per meal. Here are some examples of protein portion sizes. Animal products such as meat, fish, eggs and dairy are great protein sources. Cooked meat, roughly about the size of a deck of cards, or 60 to 90 grams. Cooked fish, 
about the size of the palm of your hand, or 140 grams. Two eggs. One glass of milk, which is one third of a pint, or 200 milliliters. If it's a dairy alternative, ensure it's fortified with calcium. 125 grams of yogurt. If it's a dairy alternative, ensure it's fortified with calcium. 30 grams of cheese, about the size of a small matchbox. Plant-based proteins are a good source too. Add beans, peas and lentils to your meals, or tofu, nuts and other plant-based meat alternatives to reach your daily intake. 4 tablespoons or 150 grams of beans. These can be baked beans, kidney beans, butter beans or black-eyed beans, for example. 4 tablespoons or 150 grams of pulses, like lentils or chickpeas. 4 tablespoons or 100 grams of soya, tofu or a vegetable-based meat alternative. 30 grams, a tablespoon or a handful of nuts or peanut butter. For snacks, consider cheese and biscuits, including cottage cheese, hard-boiled eggs, cooked meats like chicken pieces, cocktail sausages or scotch eggs, hummus with breadsticks or toast, nuts, whole nuts, nut butter and peanut butter all count. Yogurts, ala, skier, faye and liberté are high in protein. Milkshakes and milk. Custard, rice pudding and mousse. And high-protein snack bars. A well-balanced diet, together with a stable, healthy body weight and plenty of activity, is essential in promoting safe mobility and strength and reducing the risk of falls. Please think about your nutrition and consider making any changes to your lifestyle, including hydration, aiming for 8 to 10 cups a day, calcium, at least 1,000 milligrams a day. Vitamin D. Take a daily 10 microgram supplement. Protein. Spread out throughout the day. And activity. If you would like some further information about some of the topics we have discussed today, you can visit the Food Facts section on the British Dietetic Association website. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions regarding this film, please speak to your programme representative or discuss your concerns with your GP.